features that I went through trying to type check Google. So basically, I will be talking about Typecat Google. Uh, and Typecat Google is uh, a type checker for Google. Uh, so basically, we, what we tried to do with Typecat Google was uh, creating something for Google, like what TypeScript is for JavaScript. So the main goal behind Type and Lua is to catch bugs during developing phase, being uh, so adding uh, type annotations to Lua. So basically, what we did was to uh, include optional type annotations in uh, Lua. Basically, in this example, we uh, annotated the input uh, parameter greeting of this function but we didn't annotate the return type of this function because the compiler uh, itself it, it can use uh, local type inference to infer that this function actually returns uh, a string. But uh, how this function returns a string if I can uh, actually pass for greeting a string or a new value? Basically, because we are handling in rapid Lua this common idiom uh, from Lua for uh, initializing a variable with a default value if it is uh, a new value. So, with this idiom being type checked, then I can guarantee that here in this return we will always be returned a string. And when we call this with a string or with nothing, we will type check, but if we pass something else, it will not uh, type check. Uh, so uh, we uh, one thing that we wanted to do with Type Lua was to maintain several idioms that are already familiar to uh, Lua uh, programmers. So basically, what we wanted to do was just uh, add these types, and then when we remove this line that's not okay and you compile this program it will generate a Lua code that is just the same code but without type annotations and without any comments and then you can run this program on any uh, unmodified Lua VM. So the main issues we faced during trying to type check uh, Lua was trying to handle some of these Lua idioms that are common between among Lua programmers. One thing that was uh, in particular uh, does not work in type of Lua is using uh, for declarations. So for instance, if I want to declare uh, two mutual recursive functions, for, for instance, one uh, is even another that is called is odd, and then call one and another, uh, this will not type check because our type checker it will try to mimic what the Lua interpreter does by uh, doing the type checking just through one pass and this will not be allowed because we don't know what is uh, the type of is even and then here we will have some type errors. So this was kind of uh, an issue and the way we can avoid this is using a dynamic type that is provided by the language type that would in this case. So you you can actually mix uh, static typing and dynamic typing in type of Google. One uh, thing that we could do and it's uh, working uh, well, uh, I guess, is uh, type checking the way uh, Lua programmers usually overload functions. So this is an example that I was inspired by uh, a code from Overbox, a function called get upload server. It's a bit different from what's there, but I'm using just as an example. And one of these overloadings is uh, you can have an input parameter in this function that it, it, it can be a string or a table that might contain a field called upload server. And the other uh, overloading that I'm talking about is uh, use uh, overloading on the return type of the function. So what I'm doing here is uh, if this function finished successful, it will return two strings. But if 
has some error, it will return new in a string describing what is this error. So the first uh, overloading we can type check through the function type. So if I use if type server equals string, then I'm telling uh, that inside that then the variable server will be just a string. And then uh, here I can do whenever I want and is a string. So here I can uh, for sure know that if the variable server is not a string, then and it is a table and it will not uh, give an error because I can uh, access this field because it is a table that contains that field. And then uh, here I will check and return to the strings if it's okay. And if it's not okay, we will return to you. The other overloading that we handle is when we actually call this function. Uh, and then we assign the return values to two variables, one server and another variable to check if uh, the mode that was returned or if there was an error, it will contain the error. And when we narrow the type of server, uh, we are actually narrowing also the type of mod or error because these variables, they, their types are connected. So when I use mod or error here, it is a string. And uh, oh, it is a string. And when I use mod or error in the variable server here, both of them are strings. But server here is a new cloud. Another thing that we try to uh, type check in Lua is the way tables work. And that is quite difficult. Uh, we didn't want to have different types for tables. We didn't want to have a array type a map type and a record type. We wanted to have a single table type that could describe all these different uses of a table. So basically, we can have an uh, array, but this is actually will be a table type that maps integers to strings in this example. We can have map types that in this example will map from string to integers but actually we can use any other type uh, as string. We can use any other type in the key type. So if I, I want to put a function type there instead of string, I, I could do that. Uh, and we also have the regular record types, but these are also table types. They are not different types. They are all same kind. And we can also, in fact, do a mix record and array types, uh, having uh, them working together. This is also something very common in Lua to use records with an, an array part. Actually, I use that a lot in the ASD uh, for implementing the type of Lua type tracker. And one side effect of this decision is the way Lua uh, treats uh, tables. So we don't actually have an uh, array. We all, all, every time that we declare an array, we are actually declaring a map from integers to another type. And this means that whenever I access some field of this uh, kind of array, it might return new. So for this reason, we always have to include new in uh, when we are, we, are, we are accessing some field and assigning to a variable. The same thing for maps, but if I access it in a record, then I don't have this problem. So recalling uh, Google's talk, if we want to uh, call this example here in type of blue, we will get a type error. Because here, when we try to sum this, it might return integer or new due to this design decision that we uh, have. We have to throw this error because even though it's a quite silly example, 
but uh, this would I check if uh, I run to compile. So here, if I'm passing something that is not a list, but is something that maps integers to other integers, it will not show a type error here. It will show a type error here to prevent this kind of stuff. So on one downside of uh, this is that uh, you have to use a lot of ifs to uh, narrow this type to not being an integer or new, but to showing the compiler that yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm you know, I'm narrowing, I want to use this as, as just an integer. And as tables grow, this uh, kind of become quite annoying because you you have to uh, introduce a lot of new things inside your code to make the compiler be happy. Uh, another thing that we tried to do with uh, table types was mimic uh, something very common in Lua that is uh, refining tables. So here in this example, I'm using two different uh, types. One is called color and another one is called circle. Both of them are record types. And I can create a variable and say that the variable gray is a type of color. And I can also pass more fields than the actual type is this, this is okay. I just cannot remove fields, but I can add fields. And uh, in Lua, it's very common that I create a variable uh, with an empty table, and then I start popping, uh, I start putting fields in this uh, variable. So for instance, I can add a field x, then a field y, a field radius, in a field color, and then this variable circle has become of type circle. And that works in type and blue. Even though this looks quite great, this is a very important feature. Because it is very difficult to explain how it works behind the scenes. Uh, we tried to create something that would be really transparent <coughs> to programmers how this works. But we kind of forgot that programmers are curious persons. They want to do how things work. <laughs> and trying to explain how this works, it's not an easy task. And that's what I'm trying to do here. <laughs> so uh, to handle that, I will be using this uh, type D that has uh, these fields. And uh, how we solve this is, if, even though we have just one uh, type for tables, that is the table type, a table type can have different tags. So the tag, when I use on annotations, are a closed tag. So being that I cannot change the structure of this type. Uh, so here, this uh, will give an error because when I pass here T as a type T, I cannot try to add new fields to this table. Uh, so the other uh, tags that we have are the unique for meaning the type of table constructors. And we have another tag called open that is for meaning a table type that we are allowed to add new fields. So when we assign S and F to this variable open, it will uh, become kind of uh, uh, the type D. And uh, we did that, uh, and when we assign uh, open to another variable, actually the, this new uh, variable will have closed table type. So we cannot change what is inside open through uh, code. Uh, but we can still add uh, things to open because it remains open. And then we can uh, also annotate here, close it with type T, and if we assign open to uh, close this real work. Uh, so, uh, even though this is uh, 
kind of difficult to uh, understand. This was the way we tried to type check modules in Lua. Because that's a uh, usual way we use to define modules. We usually uh, create a local variable at the top of the module and then we uh, add functions to these modules and then we at the end return this module. So when we return here, we want to uh, tell other uh, Lua code that use this module that it has that type that contains these particular functions. So when I uh, use this module in my code, the actual type of uh, my math will be a table type having these uh, functions. And we can uh, call these functions. And if I pass the right arguments, it will be OK. But if I pass something that is uh, not uh, valid for this type, it will be a type here. Uh, so, <clears throat> probably my uh, favorite feature of Typed Lua is the way we allow programmers to type check uh, external modules or uh, their own libraries but without needing to uh, type check all their code. So basically we have a mechanism called description files where you can create a uh, description for your module and when you require this module even if you haven't type checked all your module but you have a description file you will be giving types for uh, your interface of this module and you also don't need to type check all of the all of it you can type check so all, all the things you need. For instance, in this example, I am type checking a really, really, really small subset of love. And when I require love, it will search for this description file. And when I, uh, when I call love functions, uh, it will know how to type check them. And here, uh, I can, for instance, create the function of date to handle the escape key, and I can draw a silly uh, gray uh, circle that I call the gray moon, and when I compile and run this, it will show this silly example. Uh, we tried to build uh, classes on top of this uh, mechanism, but it didn't work well. But for uh, but we are glad that uh, Kevin Clancy uh, could work with in a new uh, class system for type of Lua. Uh, so in type Lua you can describe classes using this syntax. Uh, and you only have to specify a uh, constructor and then you use you can define your methods uh, and use this class in your code so when I require this class I can use uh, this way using this uh, class keyword to create new objects from uh, that class I just created and then call the methods from this class one specific uh, issue of this design is that we cannot prevent programmers from accessing uh, the attributes of the uh, objects. So we can uh, access direct the radius there. We, we don't have uh, ways to prevent accessing the, the attributes of the code. Uh, and this class system, it also has inheritance. So if I want to define a class color and define a color circle, I can use these two uh, saying that this class will extend the class circle that we just defined. And then inside the constructor, we can use the keyword supper to call the uh, parent constructor. And 
it will create a uh, inherited object with the field column. Uh, and the same thing here, we can now require a circle and then define a colored circle and uh, again we can access this, uh, the attributes of this object and one uh, negative aspect of this is that we actually can redefine the function move if we want. Of course we will not do this in, in practice but uh, it's uh, something that can be done. Uh, another thing about this class system uh, is that we can uh, create interfaces and use them in our code. So in this example we are creating an interface called drawable and we will change our, cla our class colored circle to now implement this interface. And now I can uh, create a method draw that will draw this colored circle. And we feed back to the law example, now uh, we can make something a bit uh, nicer that is trying to create something that looks like a Lua logo. So I will create all the variables I need, uh, my objects, and then I will drive the earth, I will drive the hole uh, inside the earth, and I will drive the moon, and when I run the type checker, it will generate the code that when I run with plot, it will show a lower logo on the screen. Uh, so one thing to mention about this class system is that it is uh, a nominal class system. Basically, uh, what this means is that it will type check names instead of the structure of the types. So if I have a class called nominal with just one single attribute called x and I have a type called structure one that also have just one uh, view called x, the way the type checker types, uh, the way the type checker validates these, uh, these types is different. If I have another uh, class called nominal2 that has the same structure of nominal1 and I have a type called structural2 that has the same structure of structural1 and I have functions that handle nominal2 and handle nominal structural2, when I call uh, get x and with a nominal1, it will not have check because they don't have the same name. But if I call get x s with any table that has the field x with a boolean value, it will type check because in this case it is checking the structure of what I'm passing and not just the name of what I'm passing. Uh, and the last example is uh, to show that our uh, type system has support for generics. So if I want to declare a generic stack, I, I can do that using this syntax. And then when I, I can create a stack of uh, strings and a stack of integers, and then I can uh, push and pop values from this stack, I have uh, generics in uh, this class system. Another uh, interesting feature that just came up in, in, to happen in Piper Lua is uh, to have better editor supporting. Uh, so Mark Andre has worked to create, uh, to have uh, Type Lua working with the language server protocol and he could integrate uh, Type Lua uh, with this. And to do that, he had to do some improvements in the way we traverse uh, our ASD uh, to, to implement, enable these uh, nice features that you have in some editors, like find all reference, renaming uh, variables, and uh, linking. Uh, and uh, he also added error recovery to uh, the parser, so you can have uh, a lot of uh, syntax errors at the same time. So
So, uh, as a kind of closure, uh, Tiger Lua, unfortunately, most of the, uh, my fault, got a kind of uh, academic uh, feeling because I have never released Tiger Lua. It was the subject of my PhD thesis. And uh, so we end up uh, having three different code bases with all these features that I have shown. Uh, so we have uh, something that was uh, the result of my PhD. Then we have uh, the inclusion of OAuth support that was the work of Kevin Clancy during the rules of code of last year. And these uh, nice things with uh, editor supporting was done by Mark Andre during the Google Summer Code of this year and both of them uh, working with uh, Fabric, which is also one of the authors of Tablet Group. And uh, so uh, it was really challenging to create a type checker for uh, Lua that would really behave like Lua itself. Uh, and now uh, we realize that uh, another thing is that we were just trying to catch in bugs during the development phase and Type Lua was not designed for doing code optimizations, something that is uh, really uh, being inspected by the Lua community. And Type Lua couldn't do that because it's an optional type of system, it's not a statically uh, typed language. So uh, now we have Titan, and Titan, the purpose of Titan is to uh, play nicely with Lua and being a statically typed language that runs fast. And uh, our decision is to move Type Lua with Python. This doesn't mean that we are moving Type Lua as it is into Python. But actually, we are uh, going to use the lessons we learned during the development of Type Lua to make our design decisions in Python. So that's what I have to, to talk. I, Really glad, especially to Vishan for designing the type of logo. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you have time for questions, many thanks for your uh, attention. Some of the language, uh, some of the design choices at least, I remember seeing uh, you study, oh, let's take some popular, popular <coughs> modules from Blue Rocks and see, oh, how many people are using uh, incremental uh, table assignments. I, I thought his question was if we, we, yeah, but we type check it, uh, a big application, wasn't that your question? Uh, it doesn't have to be a big application, I just curious what kind of example. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, we type check it some, some example from Lua Rocks. I'm not sure if what you were adding. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I remember you did Lua file system. You did some, yeah. some of, took some of the most popular modules. I remember you did that. Yeah, but and what, 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 what I... Most of the standard library? 
Yeah, we check, we type check in most of the standard library, but just through TLD files. What uh, I was uh, mentioning is that we didn't rewrite a complete application using that that word. We have some use case, but we don't have. We didn't written a complete application. We wrote the type checker, but I guess type checker isn't. Uh, you should have written more than just the type checker. Oh, okay. What is running? No, but I have a, a version that is uh, within the. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, do you support enum? So I saw that you define a type checker for a subset of the log 2 API, mm -hmm. but a lot of the log 2 API, like, uh, key is down. Oh yeah, I, I I didn't go through, but we since we have literal types in type do we do that do that with union union types. You can just you know say that the that type can be string one or string two or string three or string four and so on. You mentioned before that you implemented most of the standard library, I guess, not all. So which part did, didn't you do and why? Uh, I type checked all the standard library actually, but oh. uh, the, the one that is uh, type checked, but it's kind of difficult is the coroutines part because we, we actually don't have a type for coroutines. So I guess probably that's the most difficult part, typing the coroutines. And some other methods are really quite, don't have a quite a you know, precise type because they are really difficult functions to type, to type check, like, like the, uh, all these functions that uh, uh, work with uh, tables, like the pairs function. And uh, get next, and this is a challenge. 